everybody. Welcome back. It is our six o'clock hour, and uh, Patrick, what are you singing for us? Today I'll be singing a song <laughs> from Mamma Mia. <laughs> it's called... Is it an up-tempo or a ballad? It's a ballad. Okay. So I figured everybody would want to hear a nice slow ballad at six o'clock yeah. at night. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Well, I hope you all are joining us while you're having a delicious dinner or... Uh, we are in the final hours of our Giving Tuesday Facebook Live event. I hope you've had fun. We sure have. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. genuine, genuine. All right. We want to give a shout out to our donors, Ada, Karen, Jeff, Brenda. Thank you so much Woo! for your support. We are inching closer to our goal. We're just under $4,000. So um, hopefully you will be the donor that puts us over the top. And you can donate. Here's the information, paplayers.org backslash donate, 650-329-0891. I looked at that like, I don't know our phone number. Did you guys know There are so many times that happens to me, yes, I understand that. All right, well, oh my gosh, Tillman. Well, hey, hi. Hey. Hi. 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 hi, how are you doing? Hi. 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 Close to our goal, we're like about just under four thousand dollars. We're so yeah, we're close. We're well, close. I think I have got my checkbook with me, so hold on, let me go check. I think <gasps> I want to add to this. Okay, wow. all okay. right, yay! All me. right, well, we love surprises. Thank you. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> Come, are you still waiting for 
Oh, still so waiting for programs. Okay. They've been delayed and are arriving tomorrow. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so if you come to see Pride and Prejudice and the program is not here, yeah. Ron Ron will come to your seat. It's going to be special delivery. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here today, That's supporting Child of Players and actually supporting um, our, you know, theater ecosystem here. Ecosystem. Um, we are so, um, we're just really lucky to have great local theater and, um, you know, great people. great people working there. So thank you, Alana. All right. Bye. Thanks for Bye. Bye. Okay. So Patrick, I think you have a, a guest joining you. We've been, um, oh, yeah. there is someone here, anyone, anyone? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, well look who, look oh, who just joined yeah. us. Come on in. Come on uh, in. It's everybody true. knows who Jeff yeah. was. Decided to arrive. Woo! Do it live. Do it live. Do it live. Do it live. I'm going to step out and let you guys try a little oh. um, doll's house. What's coming? Let's do or it. Or anything else. Well, you All want right. to take the giant I'll take the giant, giant check. check. I'll, I'll, I'll go cash that. Yeah, yeah, I'll go yeah. deposit that. Okay, great. Right. We'll miss you. Have fun. Hey, man. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. What are you doing here? Well, you know, I'm, I'm in a little bit, oh, should I stand over yep. here? Yep. In a little bit, I'm going to kick you out um, because we have to rehearse a little play. <laughs> we have a little skit oh. that we're doing here. SNL style skit? Oh, I wish, no. Is it funny? It is funny. It's a, it's a funny piece, um, but just like life, it's funny until it's not funny. And then it becomes funny again. Well, let's, let's go back and, and just kind of reiterate what's going on here. Yeah. If you don't know, which I surprised, I'd be surprised if you didn't. This is Jeffrey Lowe. He's our director for A Doll's House Part 2. Jeffrey. Thank you for doing the show, first yeah, time. But uh, tell the viewing audience, um, how you got involved, uh, what was your first show here at Palo Alto Players and, and all that jazz? Yeah, my first show here at Palo Alto Players was a production of Sarah Rules Eurydice, which was, was that 2013? Oh, ages ago. Ages ago, forever and ever ago. Yeah, I was much younger then. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, those artistic director years are no, more than more years. years. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, my first show here was uh, Sarah Rules Eurydice, and uh, it was just, one of my absolute favorite productions I've ever had the chance to work on. I think um, the support here at Palo Alto Players to sort of really go for really ambitious, artistic, and oftentimes strange and beautiful work was something that really resonated with me as I was working on that piece and something that really drew me to come back as soon as possible. Well, thanks for coming back. I appreciate that. Tell, tell everybody about, uh, are we having camera difficulties? Yes, Sounds. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So, right. are we, are we doing good? Speak loudly, I think. Oh, so, <laughs> loudly. Oh, yeah. 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 Theater right. voices. Tell the audience about what Doll's House Part 2 is about uh, and where, how it ties into Doll's House, the uh, original, yeah. and what it does. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so so the first thing I, I like to tell people when I talk about Doll's House Part 2 is don't worry, you don't need to have watched Doll's House Part 1. All you need to know, and I'm going to tell you right now everything you need to know, is there was a woman, she was unhappy in her marriage, and gasped, she left. And she left through the door, the door is very important. And then what you need to know is at the beginning of Doll's House Part 2, um, through that very same door, 15 years later, she walks back in. And if you want to know what happens there, you'll just have to close the show. Ooh. Suspense. I love it, I love it. So, uh, Doll's House Part 2 is the modern show. Yeah. Versus, uh, yeah. It wasn't written right after Doll's House. No, no. Uh, so, how, so tell me about what makes it different uh, from, from the original as yeah. far as the language goes and that sort of thing. Yeah, well, what's interesting uh, is Doll's House Part 2 was written by an amazing playwright named Lucas Nate, who um, was one of the most produced players in the country for the past three years. And uh, he has a show called uh, Bill and Hillary. That just that just that was on Broadway and mm -hmm. through there. That was Laurie Metcalf as well, right? Yeah, he was Laurie Metcalf yeah. as well. And um, he wrote this play sort of as a thought exercise, where he was sort of writing down potential titles for plays. And and one thing that made him laugh was just writing down a Doll's House Part Two, just the words, just the words of Doll's House Part Two it made him laugh. And then so what he did was um, from that title, he decided to sort of explore what that meant. And the difference between the first show and the second show. So the first show was in its time was immensely controversial. Mm -hmm. Mostly because at the very last moment, this woman who was really unhappy in her marriage and had all these ideas about um, you know, uh, independence for women and, and what, what parenthood meant and all of these things. And, and it wasn't necessarily those ideas that were the most controversial, controversial part of the play, but the fact that at the very end, 
she decided to take it to the next step and walk mm -hmm. was uh, a huge controversy and in its day the play was banned by, by many, many um, countries and theaters because because it was in that kind of surgery you know, when the readers was unhappy for Mary. Mm -hmm. And um, Lucas Nathan, who writes in Dallas House Part Two, um, although the title was amusing to him, he realized, as we all know, that we haven't quite solved marriage yet. <laughs> we, we haven't figured out an easy way to make marriage work. So all of those themes that we explore in Dallas House Part One about marriage and whether or not it's something that we still need or something that still works in today's society are, are things that are still really relevant today. So what's fun about the play is although it's 15 years after Dallas House Part 1 and you'll see uh, period clothing, the period set, and everything, the language is very modern. Mm -hmm. um, the script and our staging and our props will sometimes play with the fact that they do get very modern. Um, at certain points, and, and, and there's a lot of fun to be had when you think that you're in this really old world, and then something that feels very familiar will sort of pop up in a really fun way. And um, the hope is, as we continue on with this play, this 90 minute play, um, you will realize that the arguments and the conversations and the ideas that these four people are having in the play are also very modern and fit in a very modern way to work on what we do like. I'm right. So is it? Are you going to be pounded over the head with a heavy drama for 90 minutes? Or? No, no, you're going to be laughing a whole lot. We have a hilarious cast. And, and yeah, just like just like life, it's just, it's funny, and then it's not, and then it's funny again, and then it's not. And I like to think that although, um, you know, these characters go through some really difficult um, and heavy arguments throughout the play, that I think that we end on a tick of understanding and, and hope. Which I think I think is really beautiful. And I think one of the we were, you know, we were in our second week of rehearsals for Dolls House Part Two. And one thing that we've um, discovered in the play that we really, really love is that it's sort of an exercise in listening. Mm -hmm. It's a play where four people have very different perspectives, but if you do the play right, which we're going to do, um, you you may have varying levels of agreeing and disagreeing with these characters, but you're going to understand and have great sympathy and actually like all four of them at the same time, which I think in this day and age is something that I think is going to be really powerful to be able to demonstrate mm -hmm. that you can agree or disagree with someone, but at the end of the day you still like them. Yeah, that sounds like something we could all use a little bit of these days, right? Yeah, Merry Christmas! Hey. <laughs> As far as projects go, doesn't have to be yeah. on the play or stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, after, so, so right after this show closes, I start rehearsals over at Hillbarn Theater. I'll be uh, directing a show called Laughter on the 23rd Floor by good old Neil Simon. Exactly the same as all that. It's exactly the same. And then after that, I'll be traveling up to Sacramento at Capitol Stage to be doing uh, Lauren Nee's The Great Movie. Nice. Which I'm very excited about. Yes. And then during the day, you are, you are what was your title? Uh, I'm, I'm the casting director and artistic associate at the Lots of fun to do that. Do those little things. All right. Well, thank you for joining me for a discussion, Liz. Yeah. We had a couple of major follow-up questions regarding. Lots of room to make a difference, and because we've had this Christmas tree here, um, you might recognize that this tree we had up in our lobby during the performance of the Christmas story. And so we actually picked a couple of our um, favorites. We invited everybody to share a favorite family holiday tradition. And here's a couple of our favorites that our staff picked out. Okay, um, watching a Christmas story for 24 hours in a row. Wow. Yeah, Ooh. that's pretty. Um, <laughs> That's intense. Um, making mochi and visiting family. That's a good one too. Playing the Chipmunks Christmas song until my parents told us to stop. <laughs> okay, that's inspiring. Okay. 
That's one time through. One time through. Um, Jeff, do you have a favorite like family tradition around the holidays of things that you like to do? I Oh yeah, I just like, uh, we don't have necessarily a tradition. I mean, I guess our tradition is just to eat a lot. Oh, that is my <laughs> we just We just eat a lot of food during the holidays, and, and yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That is my good goose. We all love good goose. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, okay. Because my children put two of them okay. in the matter right. of COVID, the world. Um, my son yes. says, I like to unwrap, unwrap the yes. meat presents with an I. And then my daughter says, I love, oh, she put her full name, Parker Fong. I love <laughs> on, it says, uh, it's supposed to be unwrapping, but unfortunately it's spelled on raping. Um, oh, no. Present, present, and spending time with family. I love unwrapping presents, and then in smaller letters, and spending time with family. She Whatever she thought of us, no, 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 no. <laughs> Well, thank you, Jeff. Have a yeah. you great rehearsal tonight. We're looking forward to um, Doll's House Part 2, which opens in January. Thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you back for our last segment at 8 o'clock tonight. Don't be